and welcome to the next part of our tutorial. In this tutorial session, we'll be going through how to set up and change configurations and settings of your Stuntech device connected to Stuntnet. Changing station parameters is something that is done through station list. You must go to station list, find your station and proceed to the button in this right panel right here called web interface. Click that. This takes us to the live data view, which we have gone through in a separate video. But in order to start configuring the settings of your station, you must go to the configuration button here in the right hand panel and click on that. This will read our settings that are currently running on our station. And the view will differ slightly between type of stations that we are configuring. In this example, we're looking at the SV307, the most common station of them all at Spunnet, and we'll go through it here. We have all the panels organized up here in a very logical order. The measurement setup is the tab that is a ruling or master tab that will affect all of the other tabs. In here, you will most commonly be changing the profile one, two or three, where you can set the different acoustic weightings between A, Z and C, as well as the time integrators. Uh, furthermore, the most important part of this measurement setup tab is the instrument clock. As you can see here, the local time is being displayed in a blue color. This means that the time on the station and the time on my computer is very similar or almost the same. Now, if this would be a, a bigger drift between the computer time and the uh, time on your station, this would be red. You can easily update the, the RPC clock on your station just by clicking here. So if this is displayed in red, then you should probably be doing that. Another part I want to go through is the measurement function. This is important, especially in meters that have more options like FFT and uh, etc. On the 307, you can choose between the level meter, which is the standard sound level meter setup, or the octave band uh, level meter. So you can choose between measuring octave bands and third octave bands. Lastly, in this page, I want to look at the microphone correction. As you can see here, the microphone connection correction is by default set to environment, which is the microphone correction factor that you should be having if you're measuring outdoors with the windscreen on. If you're expecting the dominant noise to be coming from above the station and not horizontal to the, uh, to the duration of the station, you should be choosing the airport correction or filter. Now, the second most important tab after measurement setup is the storage tab. In this tab, you will be setting up your data logger, meaning that you will be defining what this station is supposed to be measuring and logging. So saving to the logger file It's most crucial to have this on as a station without the logger is basically just idle measuring, but not saving the data. There are two types of results that are being saved in the logger file. We call them summer results and time history results. So what's the difference? Well, summer results, as the name indicates, is a result that is supposed to be sort of like a summer result for a certain period of time. Now, in this example, we've set it to one minute, but usually you will have it for a much longer period. For example, let's say, eight hours, right? An eight hour measurement. If we set it to eight hours, we will have one single value result valid for that entire eight hour integration period. So for example, we will have one LAF max or LAF, LAF max if this is on or LAF min result valid for the entire eight hours of measurements. Equally so, we will have statistical levels valid for that eight hour integration period. Now, time history results, on the other hand, usually have a very short integration period, a very short step of one second. We gather less data, fewer data points, but the most crucial ones like the LAQ, LCP, LF Max, etc. Now, as you notice, we've made some changes to this uh, configuration. We've set the time history step to one second and the, time, uh, the summer result step to eight hours. Now, in order for this to go into effect, 
we must apply settings. And this is what I want to show you in the next step of this tutorial. So hit this button right here. It will ask you to confirm. Remember that uploading new settings to your stations will stop the measurement for a short period of time, a couple of seconds, and then restart it. This means that the logger will be split. This means that a measurement will be stopped for a very short period of time. Now it's good practice to always hit that apply settings button whenever we've made some changes. So always whenever you made some changes in one of the tabs, hit the apply settings button, confirm with that and you will be sure that you have now saved the current settings and we can confirm eight hour summary step period correct, one second time history period step correct. So let's move on to some other crucial tabs. I'll do sort of a speed run. And for you that want to get more details, these can be found in our SpunNet um, manual or the SV307 manual in each of the station that can be actually connected to SpunNet. There will be a manual explaining these settings in detail. The next tab is the CSV export tab. Here you can specify if you want to have a CSV file being uh, exported with the logger file. So if you have all of this active, like right now, everything is active, then it means that we will be generating two types of result files. One of the result files will be the logger data, the logger uh, that we set up in the storage tab here. And the other file will be the CSV export data. The next crucial tab that I want to go through is the audio recording tab. Now remember, this setting will only be visible for those of you that have purchased this option. This is an extra purchasable option that can be activated for your device. If you have purchased that option and it has been activated on your device, you should be able to see this audio recording tab. Now, per default, this is disabled, but as you can see here, there are a lot of different running modes. And these running modes will define when or how an audio recording should be started. Of course, continuous means that every time the station is actually out measuring, there will be an audio recording gathered during that measurement. Now remember, that will be heavy on the uh, memory consumption of the station and through that often the data consumption if you choose to upload that uh, WAV file to Svanet. Therefore, we do not recommend you to use this continuous setting as it is often a necessary use of data and memory of your station with the risk of your station getting a full memory SD card and therefore stopping the measurement. Uh, the most common one would probably be the level plus, which is basically meaning that if we pass a certain trigger level, an uh, audio recording will be um, started. Now, you can again go through all of these different parameters uh, by reading our manual but i want to show you a way of activating these recordings uh, using the event triggers so let's set it back to disabled as it was when we opened this tab and let's go on to the event trigger tab right here the event trigger tab uh, is the tab where we define different alarms you add an alarm by clicking on this add event button and straight away you are presented with this new panel. The time condition in this panel defines during which period of time this alarm should be active. Now let's assume we want to create an audio alarm that uh, sends an SMS and creates an audio recording but only during working hours and only during uh, the weekdays between 8 o'clock till five o'clock in the afternoon. Now we must define a trigger. For the 307, a trigger can mean three different things. The most common one is a trigger of a threshold. If we click here, we are able to define what kind of noise uh, data should be triggering this level. Now, per default, it's always going to be choosing from the source of profile one. Remember how we said that the measurement setup dictates all the other panels. Now, in this scenario, we have set the A weighting to be set for profile one. Thus, we can define an alarm on the equivalent level A weighted with one second integration period. 
we set the threshold here for that noise. Let's say we want to be alarmed every time the threshold passes 85 dB and the source of the noise is the LAQ. The trig count is continuous, meaning that it, uh, for this alarm to be triggered, this only has to happen one time and there is no minimum duration. Now the second part of setting an alarm is defining the actions. We want to add different type of actions. The audio alarm is one of them and perhaps an email alarm. If you have defined an audio alarm, you must want us again go back to the audio recording tab. As you can see here, we're now in alarm mode, but we still have to define the parameters for this audio recording when triggered by an alarm. So we start with the recording time. This parameter indicates how long a recording should be when the alarm is triggered. Let's set that for 10 seconds. A pre-trigger means that data before the alarm actually is triggered will be saved for a certain amount of time. This parameter is bound to the sampling and the bits per sample parameters. Now, if we increase the sampling frequency to 24 kilohertz, we can only have a pre-trigger of 15 seconds. ALO compression means that we will be compressing the file and it will have eight bits per sample. Uh, and the length limit means how long this measurement, can, how long this audio file can be. I, I recommend it to set to a shorter period. Now, if we have a situation where the 85 dB threshold is being breached for a very long time and the audio recording keeps on going, this length limit will result in that wave file or that audio file being split. So you will not end up with a huge two gigabyte long or big uh, audio recording, you will have a bunch of small one minute uh, audio recordings. Now you set it up in a, any way you want, but perhaps you want to have the full um, uh, full bits per sample, then you can set that up here, then you don't have to choose the recording range. If you're expecting to be recording loud noises, perhaps you want to be setting this higher. If you're expecting to be recording uh, lower noises, you should be setting this lower. If you don't want to make that choice, you simply set the bits per sample to 24. All the choices that you make here will define the size of that WAV file, will define how big it is and how much memory it will take. In this example, if we would be having uh, uh, 16 bits per sample, 24 kilohertz, and with the ALO compression resulting in 8 bits per sample uh, with one channel, this would result in a file size of 1.44 megabytes for the entire minute. So this is good information to have. This is good to be able to calculate uh, if you're wondering how much data consumption you're supposed to expect. Now, of course, again, when we set this up, hit apply settings, continue with yes. And now you're sure that this art recording has been set up as you would expect it to be set up. Let's turn for a short moment to the event trigger. Now, I want to show you a different type of alarm that you can set up using this panel right here. If we click add event again and straight go to the trigger conditions, you will see that we have something called system. Now, the system condition is not an acoustic condition. It is rather a system condition or um, a condition of the station per se. Now, there are different types of uh, parameters that you can um, trigger on. Now, one that you would expect for sure is, for example, the low battery one. So what does it mean? If we set this to OK, and then we set action as an email alarm to Adam, as we did before. This would indicate that when the battery inside the instrument is lower than 10%, this will send out an alarm to Adam via an email. And the same way you are able to add a bunch of other very cool system alarms. For example, device tilt. If the device is more than 45 degrees in the client so it has gone from its vertical position to a horizontal position you're able to get an alarm 
if there is a high vibration, so somebody bumps the instrument or the instrument fell from its tripod, you can receive an alarm. If location change is re registered by the GPS, you can receive an alarm and so on and so forth. These are very good alarms to have um, tracked on because you can be safe from losing your station. We had a customer in the US who thought that he lost his station, but thanks to these alarms, he was warned about them being taken away and he could, using the GPS, track that station. So these system alarms are a great tool and something that you should keep a tab on and always have active for your station. As always, remember to apply settings in order to save this and ensure that the settings are being properly saved on the station. The last two tabs I'd like to go through is the calibration tab. Here you can activate a system check for your device as well as check the latest calibration factor that um, the device saved. The system check is um, the um, uh, sound source that is uh, on the 307. Um, this is only available for the 307 and the 200A, as well as the auxiliary uh, settings uh, bar. Here, the most crucial part is the ability to activate the external device. So whether you have a metal station or dust module connected to your 307, you should go here and activate that so that the station knows that it's speaking to a metal module or a dust station or activate the GPS, um, enable the GPS synchronization um, and uh, the different charging modes. So you can have the optimized battery charging mode here, making sure that the battery is never charged to 100% uh, when it's in mains, um, saving the battery's um, life expectancy and raising it up. So as always, uh, you have an all uh, last uh, tab is the firmware upgrade. Now, firmware upgrade should be done uh, with the assistance of your distributor. So wherever you want to upgrade a firmware, reach out to your distributor and he can walk you through the process of doing that using Sunnet. Now, this was a fast tutorial on all the different tabs we have for the 307. And now if you want to go through uh, those in details understand what the different settings are. I recommend that you um, open the manual for the respective device and um, read through that. And if you have any questions, please reach out to your closest distributor or to us at Santec and we'll be happy to help. So thank you for tuning in and uh, remember uh, always when changing settings, apply settings, confirm with yes, and you will be having a great measuring experience. So thank you very much and stay tuned for another uh, tutorial video soon to come.